Do you know an interesting thing about Texas? It is the second largest state in the United States by both area and population, and they say everything's bigger in Texas. And that's the case for the state's latest mega project, the New Harbor Bridge. Stretching 506 meters across Corpus Christi's channel, this will be one of the longest cable-stayed bridges in America, beating the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge and will replace the aging structure that stands there today. That is, if it ever gets finished. In July 2022, the construction work on the Harbor Bridge project in Corpus Christi was abruptly stopped by the Texas Department of Transportation due to critical design flaws that posed a risk of the main span collapsing if the project continued. The bridge, which could become the longest cable-stayed bridge in North America upon completion, has garnered significant attention. In today's episode, we'll delve into the new Harbor Bridge project in Corpus Christi, Texas. Corpus Christi is a medium-sized city located on the southern Texas Gulf Coast. Despite not being among the largest metropolitan areas in the state, it boasts one of the nation's fastest-growing cargo ports. The port of Corpus Christi now ranks as the third largest in the country in terms of tonnage, largely thanks to substantial exports of crude oil and liquefied natural gas. However, a few limitations are hampering the port's continued growth. One such limitation is the current depth and width of the ship channel, which is undergoing a process of deepening and widening. An engineering marvel in itself, which we'll discuss in another video. The other major constraint on the port's growth is the Harbor Bridge. With its grand construction in 1959, the Harbor Bridge boldly carries U.S. Highway 181 over the majestic Corpus Christi ship channel, forming a vital link between downtown and the enchanting North Shore area. But hold on, a new chapter is about to unfold. The New Harbor Bridge Project. This ambitious undertaking stretches across six and a half miles, or about 10 kilometers, of pristine bridge and roadway, poised to replace its predecessor over the Corpus Christi ship channel. And let's talk about size. The new bridge boasts an impressive 205 feet, or 62 meters, of clearance above the water, allowing majestic vessels to glide through the port with ease. But wait, there's more. The new bridge cunningly avoids the restrictions of the old structure, sitting just a stone's throw away from its location, making it a drone flyer's dream. However, there's a bittersweet twist. The old bridge will gracefully retire at the end of construction. Downtown Corpus Christi will undergo a stunning transformation as the project requires a series of road reconfigurations, ingeniously connecting the new bridge to the existing highway. The cable-stayed main span, standing tall and mighty with support from two awe-inspiring pylons on either side of the ship canal, spans an impressive 1,661 feet, or 506 meters. This engineering marvel will play host to three lanes of traffic each way, generously accommodating both cyclists and pedestrians on a shared-use path, complete with a Belvedere mid-span that promises breathtaking views of the picturesque Corpus Christi Bay. But alas, the journey has not been without its challenges. The New Harbor Bridge project set sail in 2016, aiming for completion in 2020. Yet, it encountered a turbulent storm when a pedestrian bridge at Florida International University in Miami tragically collapsed during its construction, claiming lives and causing injuries. In November 2019, construction of the bridge was put on hold to carefully review safety concerns raised by the NTSB. After replacing the original bridge engineer, work finally resumed in August 2021, with a focus on building the pylons. This year, significant progress was made as massive crawler cranes were deployed to lift bridge sections, connecting the superstructure to the approaches. Unfortunately, the journey hit a roadblock in July when work was suspended again. The reasons behind the suspension were five critical design issues found in the main span. Let's take a closer look at these pressing concerns to understand their impact on the project and whether they can be fixed. The first two alleged flaws are connected to the foundation system supporting the pylons. Each tower rests on an enormous concrete slab, equivalent to the size of two basketball courts and 18 feet 5.5 meters thick. Beneath this slab are drilled shaft piles, each about 10 feet, 3 meters in diameter and extending to a depth of 210 feet, 64 meters. 
The pylon's most critical challenge arises from strong horizontal winds, particularly given Corpus Christi's vulnerability to hurricane force winds. The independent reviewer found that, under certain loading conditions, many piles supporting a single tower might be subjected to demands exceeding 20% of their capacity, essentially leading to failure. The root cause of this issue was traced back to an erroneous assumption by the original engineer, who had treated the pile cap, the concrete slab between the tower and piles, as perfectly rigid in their calculations. Engineering often involves simplifying assumptions during the design process, considering the complexity of structures, variability in soils, and numerous loading conditions. To make the process more manageable, certain non-essential factors are neglected. In the case of the substantial pile cap, one might assume that its immense depth implies minimal flexibility. However, when confronted with extreme loads, the flexibility of the pile cap becomes a critical factor. As a result, stresses from the pylon are not evenly distributed to each pile, leading to the overloading of some piles and rendering the foundation exceedingly deficient to resist design loadings, as aptly put by the design reviewer. The third critical design flaw concerns the delta frame structures responsible for transferring the weight of the bridge's superstructure into each cable stay. While these delta frames connect to the box girders below the bridge deck using post-tension tendons, they cannot resist shear forces, those sliding forces between the girders and delta frames. As per code requirements, conventional steel reinforcement is necessary at this interface to prevent potential cracks and shearing that could compromise the structure's integrity. The fourth issue revolves around the bearings that bear the weight of the bridge deck near each pylon. The reviewer discovered that under specific load conditions, the superstructure could experience uplift instead of the desired downward force on the tower. This not only poses problems for the bearings themselves, which is dependent. This not only poses problems for the bearings themselves, which should allow movement in some directions while resisting it in others, but also leads to load redistribution, reducing the bridge's stiffness, which is dependent on a firm connection to each tower. The final and most pressing concern relates to the loads during the bridge's construction. This phase is particularly vulnerable, especially before the deck is connected between the pylons and the first piers of the approaches. The contractor plans to use derrick cranes on the bridge deck to hoist girder segments into place and attach them to each cable stay. TXDOT and the independent reviewer assert that the bridge lacks sufficient strength to withstand these construction forces and will require additional support or reinforcement for a safe construction process. The impact of suspending work on a project of this magnitude cannot be overstated. Construction endeavors at this scale are incredibly intricate and interconnected, not something that can easily start and stop abruptly. Such legal actions have far-reaching implications, affecting thousands of people working on the New Harbor Bridge project. The expenses alone, like the daily rental fees of the two crawler cranes, amount to tens of thousands of dollars per day. When you consider the cumulative costs of all the equipment and labor involved, it becomes evident that interrupting an operation like this carries incredibly high stakes. The involvement of the insurance company in the matter is also a concerning sign. While any flaws in the bridge design must be addressed to ensure public safety, the situation raises questions about why these concerns weren't handled earlier. Mega projects like this are inherently complex, and it's not uncommon for design and construction to encounter some complications, given the lack of extensive precedent for such engineering feats. However, processes should be in place to address and mitigate these challenges, including rigorous quality control on designs before construction begins. Taking proactive measures can prevent potential issues from escalating and ensure a smoother construction journey. The reality is that this issue is far from resolved, and the ensuing battle is bound to be dramatic for those who closely follow infrastructure projects. Such situations can be discouraging for taxpayers who foot the bill. Two certainties often emerge in projects of this scale. The bridge is likely to exceed the original cost estimates and the completion date is likely to be pushed back well beyond the current estimate of 2024. Complex infrastructure projects tend to encounter unforeseen challenges and delays, and this one is no exception. So this is where we end this video. How soon do you think these issues can be fixed? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.